Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, and it's time to talk about cybersecurity, which has been a really hot topic at the moment. And I'd like to welcome Ritesh Gatu, the uh, EY EMEA cybersecurity leader. Uh, Ritesh, great to have you on the show. And with this being such a hot button topic, and with increasing digitalization across multiple industries that we've seen, what trends are we seeing in cyber at the moment? Hi, Michael, and hi, everyone listening. So, so I think digitalization is good, Michael, as long as it is responsible digitalization. Now, if you're talking about responsible digitalization, we need to make sure that uh, organizations understand that the more you're digitalizing, the larger the attack surface. So I'll give you a few examples, you know, in terms of trends that we're seeing. Today, if you join an organization, you know, you might get a chat message saying you, hi, welcome to the organization, you might receive an email. And you, and, and you revert back and the communication happens. And in the end, you realize you're not dealing with the person, you're actually dealing with the bot. And that's the kind of examples we, we're seeing a lot uh, more today. And with robotic process automation, with artificial intelligence in organizations, with machine learning, uh, we have, we're seeing a lot more humans dealing with machines. And, you know, when, when, you, when you, it's, it's, it's interesting, but at the same time, there are certain dangers related to it and certain risks which organizations are busy trying to understand. Uh, with machine learning, with AI, you know, to what extent can the bots uh, go? Uh, are there boundaries? Do they understand what is eth ethical? Do they understand their responsibilities? So these are becoming new cyber risks that we're having to deal with. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. We're seeing a lot of low-code and no-code type of uh, projects happening, which means that digitalization is not only happening with a techie team or in IT, but it's actually now, uh, you know, the, it's, it's in the ability of anyone in the organization to actually develop dashboards, uh, build a mobile application, uh, build a web portal, and so on. And that means data governance challenges. Your sensitive data used to be in very specific areas of your network, but that's now spread across your organization. So how do you deal with this kind of risk? So we, we're seeing a lot of those of new challenges with digitalization and also with a new way of working. Uh, you know, previously we used to have organizations with very specific parameters. Uh, you need to go through a firewall to get outside and, and, the, and the outside communication would also happen through a firewall to, to, to people inside your organization. And now with people working from anywhere, uh, you know, uh, being able to access cloud, being able to connect to other networks and then bring back their workstation on your on your network, connect it and bring in new malwares. So we're finding more and more uh, the concept of zero trust network, which means that you can't consider your internal network to be safe now. So a lot of those trends are, are, are being recognized today and we see new types of technologies to deal these, or with these kind of threats. You know what frightens me? I mean, listening to you talk about the, how sophisticated these attacks are, you, you talk about the social engineering that can happen, getting an email from someone that you think maybe works in HR inside your organization, and everything's remote at the moment, so you've never met the person, and then you respond with your ID number, maybe they've asked for your tax number, or some other personal information or company information, and boom, you, you've, you know, you've, you've been scammed. It's not necessarily a, a tech-driven kind of cyber uh, attack, it, it, you know, there's there's a huge social engineering element and overlay to this, and I think that makes it increasingly difficult to deal with, as well as the fact that we're now connected wherever we are, and you know, outside of the usual perimeters. How are organisations dealing with all of these threats? Because it's uh, it, it almost sounds overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned about social engineering, uh, and that's something we're seeing a lot more today. Organizations are busy training their employees, but they don't necessarily train the bots. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the danger. And even the people, you can train them as much as you want. Someone will eventually click on the link, will open the attachment, and there you go. You, you, you're in trouble. And we're yeah. seeing a lot of those. But I think it's very important organizations realize that you can't protect everything. Uh, not every information asset or data require the same level of security. So you need to identify your crown jewels in your organization, what matters most to you. If this gets compromised, I know I'm going to be, uh, you know, probably having to close down my business or I'm going to have very severe penalties and financial implications and so on. Uh, so very important for you to identify those crown jewels in your organization. And when I say crown jewels, it's your information, which are sitting inside different uh, databases, systems, and eventually on a server. But let's identify those and then be able to do some threat modeling uh, exercises on those crunch words. So what, are my, what is my attack surface? Who are, the, who are the types of attackers that would usually 
target those kind of crown jewels, what are their tactics, uh, their techniques and their procedures for hitting me? And if you understand this well, that's when you can have your strategy right and you can implement effective defenses. And very often we see organizations, you know, going directly into technology and implementing controls without that kind of knowledge, which means that you've got your defenses, but you still get hit because you didn't understand, you know, the right uh, methods of the attackers. You didn't properly, properly understand where your crown was sitting inside your network. But if you've got that right, then you can you can go along and implement the right defenses. Mm-hmm. But we also see, I think, you know, the, the importance of having security or privacy by design in, in all the digital projects that you're embarking on. So don't take cybersecurity to be something that happens at the end. So don't develop you know, uh, a new website, a new application, and after it's implemented, you get the cyber guys to do some reviews before you go live. Uh, you need to get them from the onset. You need to make sure you've got the right design, the right uh, specifications of your, of your applications, and keep them involved uh, during the course of the development to make sure that whatever you're going uh, to, to release, uh, be it public facing or inside your organization, is going to be something secure. So, so that's, those are the trends that we're seeing. Uh, you know, I think organizations have realized it over time, you know, busy working on it. Uh, and we're also seeing a lot of trend, uh, people adopting cloud for security purposes. It costs a lot, mostly if you're a small, uh, smaller organization having to implement all these cyber defenses, it costs a lot of yeah. money and you may not get the, the right benefit at the end of the day. So a lot of cloud adoption, uh, when we're talking multi-factor authentication, data loss prevention, uh, which are more uh, accessible on cloud today. So we're seeing a lot of all, uh, organizations going towards cloud to better protect themselves as well. You mentioned knowledge. Uh, do, do we have the requisite skills in cybersecurity in South Africa, I know around the world, especially in developed uh, economies, you know that that skills mismatch isn't as pronounced probably as we find here. What do we see in the local market? No, definitely, I think this is a global issue uh, when we're talking about cybersecurity skill sets. Oh. There's a big shortage on the market. Uh, you know, I think people are recruiting cybersecurity skill sets, but we're finding uh, a lot of people uh, having very critical, important roles in the organization. I'll give you an example. We, we have in security operation centers where you need people to look at the screen and identify if there are some malicious activities happening inside your network. And you rely on the experience of that person to be able to detect an attack happening in your organization. Mm-hmm. Now, that person may not have been exposed uh, to, to, to such cyber attacks in the past, uh, that person may have very limited experience as well. And at the end of the day, you rely on, on, on a human being who may not have the right skill sets to detect those attacks. And by the time those are detected, it may be too late. So I think having the right cybersecurity skill sets is important. Uh, it's rare. Uh, we're seeing a lot of organizations tying up with universities, building academies, and trying to coach their people. Uh, but it will take time. And, and we're also seeing organizations now increasingly using automation uh, in cybersecurity. So a lot of the, of, of the repetitive tasks can actually be trained uh, through a bot and, and get that bot to do that for you instead of having the human being to do those. Uh, monitoring is one example, uh, but a lot of other new technologies are coming to bring more automation in cybersecurity. Well, but I mean, if you're, mean if, if, you, if you're not using it in the defense, you can be sure the attackers are using that same technology uh, in their ever increasingly sophisticated uh, attack methodologies. Have we seen upgraded, more sophisticated methods of attack? What are we seeing out there? Yeah, we, we still see those denial of services happening. And usually when they happen, they wouldn't hit one specific organization at a time. They'll probably hit different organizations. You might suddenly find you know, internet banking of different banks going down at the same time. Those are the trends that we've seen over the past few years. And, and these are usually what we consider to be nation state uh, uh, hackers. So these, these are the bad guys and they, they will probably be hitting you from different places on the world, uh, changing their IP addresses continuously, very difficult to, to prevent that. So you need to make sure you have proper anti-DDoS devices to protect organization. And we've seen a lot of big organizations having those in place, but we're also seeing ransomware as a service. So ransomware used to be you know, something that would happen very sophisticated. Uh, today with ransomware as a service, it's easy. Uh, you know, anyone can go on the dark web uh, for some specific marketplaces, uh, pay someone, they will get a specific version of a ransom of a ransomware. If they know your email, they'll send it to you, you open and you're in trouble. So it's becoming very easy. Uh, and with anonymized payment systems, uh, it's very difficult to, to prevent those as well.
Yeah, but that is one of the downsides of of the world of cryptocurrencies. Uh, that you know, it, it it lends itself to that kind of uh, abuse. If you were to look at the future, gaze into your crystal ball a bit and say, you know, these are the big trends that you see in cybersecurity that's going to evolve over the next five years. Uh, what would you say are the big ones? Yeah, so I need to look at my crystal ball here. <laughs> um, so definitely, I think. Uh, you know, I'm currently working with some of the governments and some of the smart cities and some of the leading, leading organizations. So I'm seeing a lot of trends uh, and how the world is shaping up uh, towards 2030 onwards. And I can probably tell you, you know, we are seeing Internet of Things, uh, smart gadgets, smart devices, uh, anything connected now to Internet. And we're seeing a big increase on that one. We used to be, you know, some 10 billion devices connected to, to the web uh, a couple of years ago. It's now 22.5 early this year, as per the latest statistics that I, that I looked at. Um, and we, it's, it is expected to reach 500 plus uh, billion devices by 2030. So there's a huge increase in Internet of Things. Uh, your fridge will be connected to your Internet, uh, you know, your, your coffee machine, uh, your cars, uh, and, and a lot of more devices that you're currently interacting with. Um, and the danger is cybersecurity is not applied in the same way towards those devices uh, compared to your IT environment. So mm -hmm. often these are the forgotten items inside the network. So, so who's taking care of the cyber risk around those? So that's a question I think um, that I'll leave there, but I think it's important that uh, businesses, organizations, and, and even people uh, understand those. Um, and we're also seeing you know, a big trend around infusing technology in everything. I'll talk about internet of water being an example. We're seeing a lot of countries now with uh, water shortages, with droughts that they've seen uh, over the past few years. They're now bringing the concept of Internet of Water as an example, where you know every drop of water is being uh, measured and monitored. If there's any uh, leakage anywhere, it can be easily tracked and corrected. Um, and this is increasingly being used in, in, in deserts or places where you've got water issues. And you know if this gets into the hand of the bad guys, you know, they, they can actually prevent a nation or city from getting water. So this is becoming more critical than it is today. I'll give yeah. you another example. We're seeing a lot of uh, restaurants or, or hotels uh, and, and a lot of food manufacturing places. They are now using genetically based food manufacturing. So looking at the gene of a person, they will prepare custom food for you. Uh, so we're seeing those kind of innovations coming up uh, and with digital identity in your country, in your city, they can easily track who you are and they know what you like. So you're entering a restaurant, um, they know that you have got allergy, let's say, uh, on seafood and a malicious person has got access to it. They can actually change the data and say, no, you actually like seafood and you want it in every food. So you can get killed uh, if, if, this is, if this kind of data is not rightly protected. So I think it, it's becoming more important, uh, cybersecurity. I think uh, organizations need to make sure that security by design or, and, and, and that's infused in terms of everything that they're doing in the business today. Wow, it sounds all very James Bond, uh, but it, it is. It's very much happening uh, right before our eyes, as we can see uh, with what's going on in Eastern Europe at the moment. Ritesh Gatu, EY EMEA Cybersecurity Leader, thanks so much for sharing your insights into the ever-evolving world of cybersecurity with us here on Business Talk. Take care. Thank you, Michael. 